Welcome to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. This is your host, Lori Watson, sex therapist, and my co-host, Dr. Adam Matthews, couples therapist. And we are going to talk today about athletic male sex and how that might differ from female sensual sex and the needs of both genders. We'd love for you to find us on the web. We're at foreplayrst.com, foreplayradiosextherapy.com. And you can find us each on our websites. We both do appointments by Skype and online. Adam, what's your website? MatthewsCounseling.net. It's coming. If you're listening before September 1st, it launches September 1st. Right, and it's Matthews with one T. Matthews with one T, yeah. And I am AwakenLoveAndSex.com. You can hit us on our websites, too, just to give us feedback. And also tell us kind of what you want us to talk about. We're open to talking about just about everything. You know, primarily we're here to help couples keep it hot. So we speak a lot to committed couples and how you maintain that sexual connection throughout a relationship, a long relationship. And we're responding to one of those listeners today who's, who's given us some feedback about the idea of feeling like we hit too hard on the sensual side of sex or what he's describing as the female side of sex mm-hmm. versus the more male side of what we're saying is athletic sex. What do we mean by that? What are, what are we talking about there, Lori? Yeah. You know, I tried to get him to tell me, and he did give me some descriptors of that, both publicly. I, I blog for Psychology Today. I also blog for WebMD. And my Psychology Today blog, which is called Married and Still Doing It, you can read you know all kinds of comments there and all kinds of posts about everything. But in the comments, he, he was talking about that I think it's this – fast-paced, genitally-oriented, pleasure-oriented sex that is, you know, kind of powerful and physical. M- mm. More, I mean, probably more toward the body than necessarily toward the emotional connection, interpersonal part of sex, you okay. know, like that rooted in the body. So basically you're talking about porn sex versus soap opera sex. That we're talking okay. About? Okay. Yeah, the, I think a little the, of that. N- yeah, the, the world depiction of that, or the culture depiction of, of those, right. ty- those right. types of distinctions. Right. Like gymnastic kind of sex yeah. versus sex that is romantic and mm. you know a, on a, a beach at sunset. And, yeah, right. and slow and all about her. Okay. Mm. And, and I do think you know I, I thought about this a lot and I thought it was an important subject. He was kind of critical at first. And I can understand his criticism because so many writers that are female sex therapist writers, we are trying to translate the female experience to men so that they can make it better for her. You know, and women don't climax very easily, very quickly, primarily due to the differences in our testosterone in our bodies. I mean, Mm -hmm. we are literally different species. Yeah, and so making those things equal for couples, right, a lot of times it does lean more toward seemingly getting males to understand female mm-hmm. needs. Is that is that fair? I, is I that think, a fair thing I to think say that's true think? because the, the male sexual response is so much more reliable than the female sexual response. So, you know, he's going to climax. By, mm-hmm. by and large, he's going to get there. And by and large, you know, without a lot of effort, she isn't. And I, I know there's one male sex author out there, who sex writer author, who's a sex therapist. You know, and he talks a lot about sort of that that's crazy, that, you know, women will, you know, if, if they are pumped up about it, they're going to climax. And it's like, I know, but, but their brains are truly different because of the hormonal difference. Mm-hmm. You know, they men can get pumped up about it, right? Visually, I mean, and and women, I'm not saying, and gosh, I get tons of criticism about this. I mean, there are women visual sexual people out there who totally get off on seeing a hot guy. Okay. You know, and and they love it. But I think a lot of women don't feel the same pop in their head when they see a naked man the way men feel the pop in their head when they see a naked woman. I mean, the, the overarching consumer of porn is male. Yeah. You know, because men are visual. They 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 that's a hit. Yeah. You and know? there's like the opposite could be true too. There may be men out there who are more oriented toward the sensual than they are toward the visual. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's okay too. But what we're talking sure. about is what we sure. what tends to be the most the most common here is it does there does tend to be a split along gender lines sometimes in the type mm-hmm. of sex that's preferred. And those essential guys are not reading sort of harlequins and romances yeah. necessarily even that. I mean, they might want it slow, but 
they're not necessarily you know seeking out turn ons right? That's right like like the books the romantic books the way women are I mean they're yeah. so taken by that because I think women by and large feel like sex should be contextual you know and I think for men it doesn't have to be as contextual for them to be very excited about it. Yeah. You know, even in a committed partnership, it doesn't have to be contextual. Yeah. You know, they can wake up in the morning and just want to do it. You yeah. know, boom, done. Let's let's get on with our day. Boom. Yeah. You know, or they can they can come into a situation and just they can be angry and they want to have sex because they do. Yeah. You know, they, can uh, flip, they can flip that switch. We can flip yeah. that switch back and forth very easily from going to. We could have a fight and still want to have sex, or mm-hmm. we could, have, you know, we could be sad and then not want to have sex. Like, there's not a, there's not a necessarily a big break that has to happen between some emotional experience or some something that's out of sexual context to get into mm-hmm. a sexual context. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it can happen very quickly. So, what do you think? I mean, what would be a fulfillment of that? A better bridge, maybe, over to the male way of having sex. I mean, what can women? learn and what can women know that how they can make their partners happy sometimes well i have to answer your question with the question for you do you think that women by and large and other like we're talking about there are pockets but by and large enjoy that more athletic athletic sex i guess is the what what would the term we're going for that enjoy Mm -hmm. that is that is that fulfilling for women and can they just jump in or is that seen as i think one of the fears for men, especially nowadays, is that we not wanting to take advantage of women or rush yeah. it or yeah. meet, meet her needs in that same way. I mean, we've talked all the time about women. I we do. Uh-huh. We talk all the time about trying to make sure you're meeting each other's needs. Do we have to think about that? Because that's I think that's part of it. Part of it is not having to think so hard about sex. I think that's mm-hmm. part of the appeal of this more athletic sex is that we're just you're you're not thinking about it. You're just in it. You're just doing it. Right. And it's just you're there very quickly. You know, I think that women might say what I've heard is that especially in the beginning of sex, you know, they often come to the bed kind of more ready and that that energy that you're talking about, that male energy, just hot for it, hot for sex is very exciting. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, there's a lot of negotiations that go on and sometimes men become tentative primarily because she's saying no or she's not as enthusiastic about it or it needs to be more tender, long, romantic. And so he mutes some of that energy. And then she's not necessarily as turned on by the masculine, you know, beast. Yeah, I see. And I, I mean, I think, too, a lot of women say, oh, all he wants is sex, right? And so he starts to downgrade himself, like, oh, am I bad somehow or another for this sexual part of my being. Yeah, I think that message gets in a lot that men are are bad for wanting sex mm-hmm. in the in the way that they want it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously we're not we're not saying that's okay to take advantage or to force themselves on anybody like that's not the type no, of thing that, we're talking yeah, about. That's not we're, what we're talking we're being about. clear, but yeah, I think that message gets sent and so it's it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy in some ways. Mm-hmm. Right? Cuz guys are as tough as we want to put it out, rejection especially on a sexual level Really makes hurts. us pull back, really yeah. hurts and makes us yeah. withdraw. So that negotiation there between those two types of sex is very, seems to me to be very difficult because even mm-hmm. the negotiation a, a little bit sounds exhausting. Or, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, like, a, uh, like do we do have, we have to, do to negotiate again? that? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I hesitate to say this because it's, it's not about homosexuality, but when I saw Brokeback Mountain, mm. what really struck me as a sex therapist was nothing to do with gay sex. It had to do, in my mind, with male sex, like how immediate it was for them, how like the gratification of another partner who was immediate with it. Like yeah. there wasn't this negotiation. There was assumption, you know, both wanting sex um, yeah. at the same time. And I mean, I think part of that is really driven biologically with, you know, hormones and yeah. the differences. But I I think that what is missing for so many men is to be met there sometimes, mm. at least sometimes. Okay, you know, maybe even 85% of the time they do it her way and they're slow and sensual so that she can have an orgasm. But every once in a while to have her come to the party ready, willing, able, mm. wanting, hungry, I mean, there's just got to be something really reassuring about that and and exciting. Yeah, absolutely. You know? 
And maybe that's the missing key is figuring out how to fulfill that in a way that doesn't require a lot of tricks or a lot of negotiation or just that 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 she can come ready as you're talking about in some way. And maybe there's some, you know, some things to do to get ready for that that she needs to do. But yeah, I mean, I think that that to me is what we're talking about. The same kind of thing that we've talked about when we've talked about meeting her needs is finding how can ways. How she meet his needs? How can she meet his needs? Yeah, for more way. athletic male yeah. sex some of the time. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll be right back. This is Lori Watson, sex therapist, and Dr. Adam Matthews, couples therapist, and we are on 4Play Radio Sex Therapy. Please find us on the web or iTunes or Stitcher, and we'd love to hear your feedback, and feel free to rate us and review us. We'll be right back. Wanting Sex Again. How to Rediscover Desire and Heal a Sexless Marriage by Certified Sex Therapist Lori Watson. Each chapter is designed to fix one of the problems that cause low libido from early marriage through the childbearing years, even all the way through menopause. I've also had men read it and tell me that for them it was the most hopeful thing they read about resolving sexual problems. Look for Wanting Sex Again on Amazon.com. You can also talk to Lori Watson for therapy in person or via Skype. I offer couples counseling and sex therapy and I think about both aspects of the relationship, emotional intimacy and sexual technique and that combination together helps marriages be happy improve your sex and improve your relationship with awakening center for couples and intimacy find out more at awakenloveandsex.com and sign up for their next couples retreat weekend hosted by Lori watson awakenloveandsex.com awaken what's possible It is one of my great joys in life to be able to really help individuals and couples find strength in their relationships and really find hope again. Licensed marriage and family therapist, Dr. Adam Matthews from Matthews Counseling. I work with a wide variety of issues, including depression and anxiety, marital issues, issues with adolescence. I believe that therapy should be designed around you, that it should be personalized to who you are and to your unique situation. Therapy is available in office, online, and by phone. I want therapy to be comfortable for everyone. At our office, you'll find that we sit around a fireplace in deep, comfortable chairs, look at the problem differently, and offer practical solutions for you to take home and utilize outside of the therapy room. Schedule today and rediscover hope. You can find me on the web at matthewscounseling.net. Matthews with one T. You can contact us through email or phone and find a lot of resources on our website, matthewscounseling.net. Welcome back to 4Play Radio Sex Therapy with sex therapist Lori Watson and couples therapist Dr. Adam Matthews. And Adam and I are here, we're talking about kind of a a male way of having sex full of energy and athleticism as opposed to maybe something that we push a little bit more in terms of a female way which is relational and sensual. And I think over break we've been talking about something that I think is really important. Yeah, well I think that this topic is important because I think one of the things that we want to be careful of is we don't want to condone sexual assault at all. And that's been in, yeah. that's been in the news right. lately. And so talking about it, and I think men in general, ones that have any kind of sense about themselves and any kind of self-awareness care about having athletic sex, right? Uh-huh. They uh-huh. like, we don't want to deny. That's hot. That's hot. Yeah. I mean, they, we don't want to. Um, but we're not saying it. we're not giving anybody permission to yeah. truly drag her by the hair. That's right. We're not into wanting, the bedroom. Yeah, and absolutely, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right. We're not. But there is a sense of that it can feel a bit repressing sometimes. Like mm-hmm. we have to push that need out of the way. The caveman. The, the yeah. The the, hot, an, the animal, so the to speak. Animal, animal sex, dirty right? Yeah. Thought kind of part yeah. inside. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. we have to regulate those urges and, and feminize those yeah. urges. I think you know we've been talking about how. Our culture almost, and marriage sometimes, can feminize a man. Like, okay, he's so rejected. Now he's tiptoeing around her, and now she's not turned down by this guy who's tiptoeing around her. Oh, she he's so anxious. I don't like the way he seduces me. It's too. I can see his anxiety. It's like, well, you know, you might have contributed a little bit to that anxiety. That's right. You know, by your rejection. And that listen, like, I there's a there's a part the therapist part of me. 
Like I can, mm-hmm. uh, there's a part of me that understands, right? Like there's women for a long time. There's there's been a lot. It's you know, male has been at the forefront, right? Yeah. For his yeah. for eons, sure. really, for sure. since the beginning. His of time. way has been has yeah, has the dominated. Ma- the man's I mean, way has been so the you know the therapist part of me like really understands and gets that and wants to be really sensitive to that. There's a male part of me that says this is a part of who who guys are in a way. Right. Mm-hmm. And, then, and that it does get squashed. It gets. Uh, and then the questions come like, I think men ask themselves, is this a valid? It may, almost like the am I crazy that I want it this way? Yeah. Most of the time, I think guys would say, no, I'm not crazy. Mm-hmm. But then to hear that from their women or from their wives or from their sp- their partners. Right. Like, like who say you're crazy? Uh, yeah, or you're sex saying, crazed. Right. That's right. You're just sex crazed. Yeah. It has got to be really a terrible feeling. You know, yeah. like they're not understood. They're not deeply gotten. And I yeah. think, so. I mean, all of us, we want our partner to really get it, yeah. how we see the world. And I think you're right. I think because our bodies are so different, I mean, the genders are, their experience about sex is so different. It's very hard to see this. I, I, I do honestly feel so privileged as a woman to sit with so many men who talked to me about their deep fears and fantasies mm-hmm. and feelings about their sexual lives that I think I've been privileged to understand the way they think about it, you know, yeah. in a way that most women aren't exposed to that yeah. um, and don't see, you know, maybe they're exposed to a need from their partner and they don't, they don't somehow or another able to stand in the guy's shoes and feel with them what their yeah. body feels, what they want how they like it. Yeah. I think the fear for men sometimes is that it's going to be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Right. They're going to be be too much. It's going to be too. The sexual animal is going to come out and overwhelm her dainty little self. And that's that's difficult, right? Or that if they do express that, again, like we talked about before, that that's going to be, that that part is going to be rejected. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, figuring out, but I I think the fear is that that if that gets repressed too long, then what happens is sex becomes unfulfilled. Yeah. It becomes unfulfilling. It's, uh-huh. it's not as it's not as hot as it possibly could be from the male side, and then that makes him less likely to, to want to have it, and it makes him less likely to want to be attentive to needs of his partner. Um, and, and I think that that is why some men look at porn, you know, because they can let out kind of that it's it they can let out that part that feels like it's all about just flesh slap and flesh yeah. you know without the need for it to be so complicated and yeah. such a negotiation yeah yeah and so i think you I think, but women don't understand that i will say for sure yeah i mean women feel very insulted oftentimes by that yeah. but i think it's it's partly this dynamic that yeah. we're talking about yeah so finding the middle ground there i feel like there has to be a middle ground well, a middle ground, though, even when you say that, my heart kind of sinks. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, like, does that mean we're averaging the way we like to do it in a way so that it's more flat than he wants to do it and, you know, and more energy than she can take? Yeah. I mean, that's that's not going to make—I think it's kind of a trade-off. It's like sometimes she's got to do it his way, and sometimes he's got to do it her way. It's it's more turn-taking, Yeah. you know, and than an average. I would agree. I think that's that's more— what I meant there too was that it's the compromise is, is that we're not that every time is not going to be exactly the way that my my preference might be for it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But that that has to be returned. And sometimes if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to sacrifice, you know, on Saturday night, on Sunday night, let's get something back in as, as mm-hmm. far as how I like it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there seems to be a like you said a, that that feels like a give and take. That doesn't feel like a. Uh, my my needs are completely suppressed to meet her needs. Yeah. I, I mean, I think the one difficulty, and I said this to this um, person who wrote in on my blog, that, you know, unfortunately, the fast athletic sex, women often can't keep up mm-hmm. with arousal. They, they can't get there. Okay. You know, because, so they can't have an orgasm generally. So, A, if they're not aroused, they're not really meeting him in the hot and, you know, the hot and dirty sort of yeah. way that he wants, yeah. you know, because they just, they don't have the the kindling inside that the match just goes, you know, boom, he's on fire. Yeah. You know, she, she doesn't have that sort of part. So I guess I wonder how can women do that sometimes, 
you know, is it that they just wait for it to strike them? Oh, you know, I really feel horny right now and, you know, let's mm. drop on the floor. I mean, I just don't think women are going to drop on the floor very often then. Yeah. Well, are there things to to do in the in the buildup of that that could help her get to to be ready for it yeah. more yeah. than to be further along than he is, so to speak, mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. he gets there? Sometimes. Yeah. Right. And, and I mean, I think, first of all, both parties knowing arousal takes a woman longer. But for her, like you said, I call it stop, drop and roll. You know, every once in a while. You got to stop, drop, and roll. You know, (laughs) you got to be in it. I mean, mentally at least, even if you can't be there physically. And if he can know, okay, we're going to stop, drop, and roll. She's not going to climax, and he's not like going to walk away from that feeling that it wasn't fulfilling because she didn't get there too. It's like, well, she couldn't, but she was in it with her energy. Yeah, she was, you know, in it all in it. But yeah, her body just didn't you know, work that fast. That's okay. So maybe afterwards, you know, they can, then afterwards they can do it a second time or they can, you know, still make love so that she climaxes or, or maybe one thing that I've suggested to a lot of women is go ahead, masturbate before, you Mm. know, use a vibrator, get yourself aroused because with arousal, her inhibition drops Mm. and then go downstairs and seduce him. You Mm. know, like when she's hot, she's wet, She's ready and she grabs him and that's a stop, drop and roll. You know, just she's she's there. Yeah. You know, every touch feels great to her. And he, I mean, it would probably blow his mind. Right. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, gosh, you know, she wanted me. She expressed it directly. She went for it. And I mean, I think that might be one way to, you know, plan yeah. for that. Yeah. And knowing because because it's not going to be in her head. I just don't think she's going to feel the hunger that the the tiger inside that you've described about men i mean it's yeah. it's the tiger inside That's you right. know she doesn't necessarily have the tiger inside because she doesn't have the hormonal base yeah and what you're describing though of, of what a woman could do like that to me would be a big turn on for men mm-hmm. right because then you're adding on top of that your partner like went the extra mile that mm-hmm. she really wanted to be able to please you really wanted it to be about your needs then. And so that, to me, adds to it. Because what you're talking about is just getting ready on top of that, like knowing that that's coming, being willing to try it, being willing to do what it takes for her to get there so she can enjoy it, so it can't be fulfilling for both of them Mm -hmm. in that moment would seem to be a huge thing for, Uh, for couples. Yeah, and as a sex therapist, you know, obviously I talk to women all day long too, and... I would say I know if you're a woman out there listening that there's going to be resistance to this, that there's internal resistance to the thought of arousing yourself first. Like there's something bad about that or bad Mm. girl about that or dirty girl about that, which, of course, men would really like every Mm. once in a while. But, I mean, you know, it's like there's there's just this intrinsic inhibition about designing a sexual encounter. I mean, one time I I asked a woman, you know, what do you like? What, you know, describe the ideal setup. And it's like she couldn't do it. It was like, well, you know, she she could not decide because somehow or another that was sexual agency. Mm. And I think women don't think about having to have sexual agency. They think of themselves as responders. Yeah. The guy has all the sexual agency. He's the one who's going to seduce me. He's going to initiate. He's going to make it happen. You know, and and I think that they don't realize that to be a full sexual partner, they have to have sexual agency. Yeah, I think that's that's a that's a good word right there. The the sexual agency that really Mm -hmm. kind of puts what I feel like we've been talking about into focus, Mm -hmm. which is for both parties in that to have that. Mm -hmm. And men sometimes have it more readily available than than women do. But Mm -hmm. when those when we're meeting both partners needs and not just one partner then sex becomes something that is that is hot. That right. is, I mean, right. it becomes hotter than it was even before and can be very fulfilling for both of them in that right. way. Right, absolutely. Okay, you're listening to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy with sex therapist Lori Watson, couples therapist Dr. Adam Matthews. Please send us your comments, rate us and review us. And we are on foreplayrst.com, iTunes, Stitcher, Facebook, Twitter, We both have personal Twitter feeds, and so we're available for comments. And thanks so much for listening. We we love it when you respond to us. Thanks. 
Hey, help us stay on top here at Foreplay. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much. <laughs>